so yeah so first off i thought i'd tell you a little bit about myself and um, i have been crowdfunding projects for nearly 10 years now and it makes me feel incredibly distinguished and <laughs> experienced um so i've done it in different guises but my main um hat that i wear is with pave with gold which is a small um marketing and crowdfunding agency that i run with my business partner richard we we do lots of different types of projects we have crowdfunded um a mover kit which is like a wearable tech gadget for kids an interactive doorbell um we've worked with um makeworks in the vna we have also crowd, helped to crowdfund um, Creative Inverness or Circus Art Space, which was their um, part of the Creative Scotland pilot that we did for crowdfunding. We work with and as mentors with a lot of big organisations. So we work with Creative Scotland in the past, with Vanilla Inc, with the Welsh Government, um, the Design Council, um, CRL, which is a kind of tech co-working space in London and the Royal Conservatoire as well. So um, trying to always work out how we can help more people launch their ideas. And we realise that the best way to do that is to work with other organisations and that we can help spread the word and get more people involved. And, and that's why we've tended to partner in the last few years with these large organisations. So straight in to a crowdfunding overview. What is crowdfunding? And I think it can be so daunting to so many people, but at its very, very core, crowdfunding is just bringing together a community to help you bring your ideas to the world. There are different platforms and the different types of crowdfunding, but it's all about community. That's the most important part. There's three types of crowdfunding that I think are probably the most interesting and relevant. Um, there's donation, reward and equity. Donation is probably what you would find, you know, if you were going to go on a fun run or walk up a hill or do something for charity, that tends to be the donation model where some people donate something um, without the expectation of anything back. Um, that tends to be in platforms like GoFundMe or Just Giving. That's the, the kind of platforms that we're more familiar with. And it is a really low barrier to entry. Um, you know, you can set up a page super easily and um, usually it's a charity or a charitable thing that you would use it for. Um, then there's reward crowdfunding. And that um, is the most common one that we would use. So that is Kickstarter, Indiegogo and Crowdfunder. That's where you have a, a campaign page that's set up with um, little rewards that you can give people in return for supporting you. So it might be that you're launching a product, therefore the reward becomes quite straightforward. It might be that's that's what you're giving them is that it's the product that you've made or want to make, or it's for an event and it might be the tickets for the event that you want, or um, you can be super creative with the rewards and I'll go and tell you a little bit more about that later. But um, so this is reward crowdfunding. And then there's equity crowdfunding, which is by far the most complex type of crowdfunding that you can do, and that you have to be sort of an organisation that ex has existed for a while, that you perhaps um, have proof that you're going to give return on that money that people have. It's, it's very much a, a, a financial transaction. So the barriers to entry are super high, and um, it's quite difficult to kind of do anything from the ground up with equity crowdfunding and um, it's much better to kind of start off with a different model and, and work towards that then um that's that's like a super fast run through but the key takeaways are that um there's every platform has its own positives it's more likely that you'd be doing a reward crowdfunding campaign but e even within that you've got like i said crowdfunder indiegogo and um kickstarter within that they've all got their own different positives and negatives and things to consider so indiegogo tends to be super techy it does really well for particularly gadgety things like a or I'm trying to think what something would be but like you know like a brand new type of face mask or something that um 
you you would find that it's like a new innovation. I know you get that on Kickstarter as well, but it's much more geared at creative people. So films, mu music, theatre, um, and also things like bakeries do really well on Kickstarter. And then there's Crowdfunder, which again feels much more local. It's UK specific platform. It's about um, kind of creative projects, but quite at a local level, I would say. Um, whereas Kickstarter is a, an, a global platform. Um, so yeah, what's more important than the platform or anything that you choose is about the, the goal that you have. So, you know, is to have that really clear in your mind is what your goal is, because then that'll help you choose your platform. If you're looking to build a brand, maybe something like Kickstarter is a better idea. Um, but mostly it's about the support that you can bring to the platform and also what you're looking to get out of the campaign. So if you're looking to just do a campaign, deliver that, and then you're done, then you can choose a different platform. But if you're looking to do something that's got long-term growth, then you could probably look at something like um, Kickstarter or Crowdfunder to help you, help you start that off. But all of these, all of these platforms, regardless of what you choose and what model that you, you pick, um, they all follow the same sort of pattern in that you need to have a really, really, really good story to tell. Because what you need to do is build trust in people who've never heard from you before. You need to convince them that you're going to do what you say that you're going to do and that it's going to be great and that they want to be part of it too. So it's all about storytelling. So every campaign is a story. And you can tell that story through lots of different techniques. Most of these platforms give you the option to have a video and I would absolutely encourage you to do that video because it's the instant invitation to your backers to come on board, learn more about you and get over that message really quickly. We recommend doing no more than two and a half minutes maximum on your video. Keep it really short. Tell the story in, the, in just 15 seconds. Lay out why you're running the campaign. Introduce who you are and your process, tell us about your team, who's involved, who's involved already, who have you already convinced that your idea is brilliant? Tell us more about the project, what extra stuff do you want? Basically, if you think about how people's attention spans work with videos, you maybe see it on YouTube, you watch like a minute of, and a half of something and then they all just disappear. So you want to, as quickly as possible, tell them what it is that you want to do and then make sure you end on a call to action. So. I've spoken to people recently who've done longer videos and they've had that break point within the video itself where they've gone, okay, back us now. So people who do have that shorter attention span can leave at that point and they've got all that they need to know. But for the people who are keen and want to know more, they've got that option as well. Project description now. In, in any campaign page, you've got this big long stream of text that you can add and you can break that up. So. I always like to chunk it down into these important areas that I'm going to take you through. So project description allows you to dive really deep into the product, talk about the development and the team. Um, this is an example of a project that we worked on a few years ago called Susie Snooze. It was with a company called Bleep Bleeps and it was the second pro product that they had launched. So they had a little bit of um, support already, but it was for quite a different campaign. But with this product, we only had one prototype. So we didn't, couldn't send it to lots of people for them to see it and hold it in their hands. So we had to convince them that um, this was a great gadget for helping your kids go to sleep. So you need to have a lot of trust for parents to put something in their room of their sleeping child. You need to make sure that people are happy and confident that it's going to do what it says it's going to do and it's going to be safe. But we only had one prototype to show this. So what we did was we brought together, we showed on the campaign page itself, we showed the whole process. We brought together videos of, of people using it. We, we met um, with a group of mums who talked about how it might be useful. They had their kids playing with it, showing that it was safe and, and easy for them to use. So, you know, that's a really good way to talk about that whole process of how you got to that point. And this is an example from a product, but it's the same for um, if you're bringing a community together. You want to show how you got to that point, what decisions led you to run this campaign and, and why it's important. 
showcase your team. Now, a whole load of work that you're going to do is about outreach and bringing more people on board. Every member of your team now, it might be that there's only one of you running your campaign, but there might be people that you've got who's maybe helped you with the video or proofread something. They're all your team. They're all people who are behind you from the start. So think about showcasing them on your page and saying thanks to them for their hard work. And then timeline, show how uh, long it's going to take for you to launch your project. So once the campaign's finished, when will people expect to get the rewards from you? I always say be quite conservative. Say something. If you think something's going to take you six months, say it's going to take you nine and then you can deliver early. That way, but if it is delayed, and usually they are, it means that you've got that little bit of contingency to play with so that you're not disappointing all these brilliant new people that you've invited on the journey with you. And then budget. This is quite a new thing. Um, to, that we now encourage you to add to your campaign. And it's just really break down where the money's going. It's such a good way for people to understand how projects come together. I think there's this massive um, misconception perhaps and, and how much money and time projects take to get off the ground. So it's always really good to kind of be really clear with yourself and with your audience about how much money it's gonna to take to deliver what you want to do. Um, and explain really simply why you want to reach your goal. It's not just a, a figure that you've made up. It's like, here's all the things that we need to do to make this a reality. Um, and it also really shows that you've thought and considered um, every single part of your campaign. It shows more of the effort that you've put in. And then something that we all hate to do <laughs> is talk about our accomplishments. Um, you know, if you've received any investment before or if you've maybe received some funding or some you've had a really nice quote from a customer like that all needs to go in there so if you've got any high profile supporters or evidence of your expertise so maybe you've um, delivered something similar previously like you want to talk about it here you want to show people again that you're trustworthy that you've got experience with this and even if you don't have experience straight away with this that you've got something similar that you can attribute to it or that you can rely on other people who do have that experience. So it's just kind of, again, showcasing your team and your accomplishments with that. Um, and another really good, great thing to show on your campaign page is press quotes and testimonials. Again, if you people don't know who you are, if you've got a respected paper that's that's covered you or a magazine that you've been featured in, or even an individual that has said something uh, positive about your campaign it's good to show people that it shows people that there's more than just um you that believe in it that there's there's already supporters out there and that doesn't have to be from day one of your campaign that's something that you can add in as you go through ah, so that's all that goes into your campaign page so it's a lot to think about but by doing all those different things and really making that campaign page do all that hard work for you now all these other efforts I'm about to tell you about will become much easier because you've done the job for you so if you want to write a press release you've already written a brilliant campaign page that you can take uh, quotes and lift things from if you want to show um, it off to potential backers you've already got a page that you know is just going to tell everyone everything that you need to know it's just um the easiest way is to focus on having a brilliant campaign page and the rest just kind of falls into place afterwards. I need to take a drink. So then what I always like to get people to do is to consider if crowdfunding is right for them because it might not be right for every project and not everything can or should be crowdfunded. So I always say, you know, does your project have a mission? Do you have a clear audience for that project? And are you doing something innovative? That doesn't mean you've got to be doing something out, completely out of the box, but is it something new and exciting? And possibly crowdfunding is the way to go. Um, something that people can get excited about and, and really drive, help, dri help you drive your project further. Um, you know, you wanna make sure that that goal that you've set for yourself is achievable, that it allows you to deliver the rewards that you've said so like you're not going to be 
in a pickle because you're not budgeted for the rewards properly. Um, if you have a lower goal amount, um, it's more likely that you'll earn more above that. So funded projects have a better conversion rate than um, unfunded projects. If people like to back success, <laughs> so um, usually once you've funded as quickly as possible, you will overfund. So it's good to kind of set a goal that you think is achievable. And press are much more likely to share that story. So with all this in mind, I think it's really good to think about where backers come from. Um, I think there's a misconception that a lot of backers will come from the platform, but it's not the entirety of the story. So previously it used to be that 30% of Kickstarter backers came from the platform. So you had to make up that 70% yourself, but now it's changed and it's a bit more 50-50. You've got to think about the, your network. So that's probably the most important tool that you have because you've built it up for years and years. It's the community of people that you've built around the project already, your friends, your family, um, those might not be people who are going to put loads of money into your campaign, but they can shout about it for you. And they you don't know who they know who might be able to shout about it on your behalf. So it's about talking to people about your project and about events as well. So in, in the olden days, when we could go to events all the time, just going and telling people about your project um, is a really good way of, of just getting the word out there as much as possible. Then PR, which is stuff that you've gone out there and, and got for yourself. So press, any blogs that you've been featured in, working with influencers. By that, I mean, people who represent your audience. It doesn't have to be someone who you might stereotypically think of as an influencer, but someone who's important to your audience. And any brands that you might partner with or organizations that might br bring credibility to your uh, campaign. And you might want to consider Facebook ads or Instagram ads as well, if that was relevant to your audience. So one other preconception that people have is that you kind of put up your campaign page and you're done, but it takes months to put together a really strong campaign. And so I've got a rough timeline here. So about three months out, you want to start to build that community. So that's just, at, at, at the core, it's just telling people about your campaign. That could be setting up a website, starting your social media, thinking about a content plan, maybe building a mailing list going out and talking to people. If it's a, a, a campaign that affects your local area, going out and telling people about it, handing out flyers, putting up posters, all that sort of thing. Then two months um, out from the campaign launch, you want to build all those lovely assets that we talked about for your campaign page. And then a month, that's when you start to really, really, really drum up um, support. You want people to know that it's gonna launch in a certain day. You'd, have that information going out to your community but also that's when you'd start to engage uh, influencers um, your personal network and ads so that's all in that month coming up to the campaign and then launch um, we always recommend 30 days for your campaign any shorter you probably won't get enough momentum any longer and you're going to run out of momentum <laughs> it's, like, it's quite an exhausting process um, so yeah, then um, throughout the campaign, you'll have updates and community management. So it's a very involved process. And that's why we always try and recommend having a team behind you as well. So it means that you can share this load out amongst different people. Um, and that's like a very rough timeline to follow. So Big question, I've said to you to go out and build a community, but how do you do that? Um, there's three things that we think are important before the campaign launches, and that's understanding who your audience are. So rather than being like, this appeals to women aged 18 to 35, it's like, well, who are those people? Like, where are, what are they doing? What are they reading? Um, what are they excited about? And what are they interested in? Then give them something to follow and then grow a community mailing list. Now I'm gonna take you through each of these. So we do this exercise, which I love because I just love people <laughs> like imagining who they are and if they'd be interested in what I'm writing about. So 
This is for a sustainable furniture brand that we worked with. Um, we knew that the types of audience were, they were forward thinking, response, they wanted to live responsibly, they lived in small spaces, and then there was a bigger audience for organisations. So that's four different audience types, four different audience types, who are all thinking about different things and have different um, core values. Um, and so we would break them down like that and then we'd start to get a bit granular and actually think about who those people are. Um, so we called them Daniel. Actually, these are all real people. <laughs> so we didn't call them that, that is their names. Um, but we had Daniel, Cital and Matt, and then the brands, shops and organizations. But what's really nice about this exercise, you, you do have an age group, you've got what they like, you've got their values, um, you know what they're knowledgeable about. And, and it is a little bit of artistic license. Like you're kind of saying, this is what we think, but it helps with narrowing down you, who you're going to reach out to for press. It helps you think about the content that you might want to share on your blog or on your social media channels. And it also helps you uh, clear out the noise of anything that you're not sure about. So, if, you know, often, you know, if you're running a campaign for even people in your like local community, there's people that it's for and there's people that it's not for. So it's really good to be very clear about who it is so that you don't waste any time trying to get to people who are, who's not going to be interested in it. And this is the way that we do it. So then this is where we look about what they read, what brands they might like and social media. So it gave us like a sense of the types of things that those other brands were sharing that we might also want to share. Then give them something to follow. Set up a website. You can just set up like a really simple Wix or Squarespace page, which has just got a sign up button on it and a teaser image. That might be enough. And it could also have a links to your blog and any sort of product development that you've done or project development. Um, content and social media. So content is really important um, because what you want to do is create things that are going to drive people back to your website. And with this, this was a, a little stone that you held in your hand and it glowed. So it made you feel like you'd take a moment of mindfulness. So all of their content was about being mindful and taking time out and, and being conscious about when you were stressed and so all the contents around that sort of thing and engaging with these sort of of, of people um, and the same with the Instagram we wanted to make sure that it was very calm and uh, backed up that feeling of mindfulness so but it gave them something to follow so set up your social media accounts and then how do you build that community so you've got your account set up you've got your website so this is all about the, that lovely content. Um, here, you, it's a lot of these are kind of photos that represent the brand and those brand values. Um, and then going to events and shows, doing talks and podcasts, kind of putting yourselves out there a little bit more, like podcasts as well, a really nice way to connect with the community. And instead of thinking about like the biggest podcast that you can be on think about the most relevant podcast or, or event or talk that you can go to it might be small but it is relevant to you and then paid ads and I think there's really nice ways to do that that doesn't feel expensive so it's expensive or overwhelming it's not something that we do a huge amount of but it's always good to kind of think okay well maybe I could grow my community with just putting 10 pounds in to Facebook and seeing how that works and then you can direct people to with those ads to a mailing list sign up. But one of the most important things is to share a preview of your campaign. So once you've got your campaign set up, is to share a preview before it launches so people can see what it is. You've spent all that great work and time building that campaign page. So you want to share it um, about a month before launch. That so then they they know who you are. They can start to talk about it. I think like um, there's always some like hesitancy and sharing stuff before launch but I always say go for it because it just gives people the overview and the confidence to to support you so some quick top tips um how to help you reach your goal plan ahead the longer the better build your community before launch talk to people about your project and build relationships with press and influencers and then how do you build that community Know your audience, 
look at what your competitors are doing. Who are they talking to? What's working for them? What's not? And find the most suitable way to reach your audience. So it doesn't have to be Instagram. They might not be on Instagram. So it's going out and finding where they are and what's interesting to them. And that's talking about things that they like as well. Well, it's quite interesting now, like having seen them over the years, I think definitely um, people who haven't made the effort with their campaign page. So maybe they've not put images in, they've not, they might have great copy, but they need to break it up with images and just bring it to life that way. Just spending a bit of more time on it. It doesn't have to be the flashiest thing, but just something that looks like it's had love and care put into it. And then the other one is not doing enough outreach, so not showing it to enough people. Those are definitely the two, the two biggest ones. And I think um, it's, it's interesting because you see, I think like I've looked at so many now that you can just see right. what needs to be done quite quickly. You know, even just um, like on Kickstarter, for instance, you can add in graphics so you can make the headers really shine. And that's really nice because it just gives it a bit more of your brand and personality in there. 